Hey everyone, welcome back for a, another video, some more Wyoming coverage. So, as we all know, a couple days ago, Eugenia flew out to see her best friend that she's known for 15 years, Jeffrey Starr. She is currently staying with him at his ranch in Casper, Wyoming, and the two are having the time of their lives. They are shooting and eating yaks. They are putting on makeup. They are going live on TikTok. They are trying on cowboy boots. They're just doing everything. Everything and anything. These two are doing it. So, couple Instagram story posts to take a look at here before we jump into things with the live stream coverage. They have just been putting up uh, some updates on each of their pages. Looks like to here to start out with, it's just them in one of Jeffrey's sports cars, getting ready to run some errands. And then Eugenia posted another photo saying, having so much fun in Wyoming with the amazing Jeffree Star. Now, the interesting thing about this photo, in my opinion, was where's Eugenia sitting? You know? Because typically when we see Eugenia vlogs or we see Eugenia TikToks or anything that she puts online involving her in a vehicle, it's always with Deb driving and Eugenia in the back seat. Here, however, looks like Jeffrey was operating the car and Eugenia was sitting in the passenger seat. Hmm. So, okay, so... When it's Deb driving Eugenia around, she has to go in the back seat. But when she's with her best friend that she's known since 2008, she's sitting in the passenger seat. So, I don't know. Does this kind of dispel the theory that a lot of people say when we talk about the whole positioning in the car thing? A lot of people in the comments, when we do talk about Eugenia's decision or maybe it's not her decision, to sit in the back seat when dri when Deb drives her around, it says, well, Jord, think about it. Th think about, think about like, the, the whole concept of a car seat. You know, the, the, the point of a car seat is to keep someone safe and secure in one spot. So, uh, I don't know. What's going on here with this? Uh, I mean, would it? Do you think maybe there was a little bit of embarrassment going on? It's like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to look silly in front of him, so I'm just gonna sit in the front seat and take the risk. Do we not have Deb breathing down her neck, telling her to do everything? Haven't really gotten any wind of Deb this entire trip so far. Um, we don't know if Deb is staying nearby or even if she went at all. I would be highly, highly, highly surprised if Deb did not go with Eugenia on this trip and was kind of keeping a little bit of a distance, not to cramp her style, so to say. But yeah, would definitely be shocked if Deb was not around. But I think that in this case, Eugenia is placing all of her trust and understanding that she would otherwise give to her mom in the hands of Jeffrey because we know how much she reveres Jeffrey. So, okay. Going for a little ride like this. I mean, it's possible that they could have just done this for the photo and then they could have gotten a different car. Or she could have gotten the back seat after this. I mean, you know, uh, but I just I just find it a little bit interesting. For years now, we have seen Eugenia only go around in transportation by sitting in the back seat. But now because we're with Jeffree Star, our beloved TikTok friend that we've known for 15 years, we're cool with sitting in the passenger seat. So, I don't know. I guess I want to ask all of the people who previously had thoughts to share on the whole car thing of, well, you know, there's a reason why she sits in the back seat. It's for safety reasons. You know, think about it. If they were in an accident and anything were to happen, you know. So, I guess, like, my question is for those people. So was it a matter of safety all along or was that Deb insisting she sit in the back seat? Because if you go on Eugenia's channel, there was, I want to say that this video was 2021. It may have been 2020 though. And it was a video of 
she and Deb driving around town and Eugenia was preparing to get her driver's license. So in the past two years, we have seen a big difference from Eugenia feeling confident enough to operate a vehicle to going to the back seat. And now here we are in October of 2023, and she is out traveling seemingly by herself with um, one of her new friends and sitting in the front seat. So kind of a roller coaster in terms of the whole car stuff. Uh, don't really know what to make of this, but this clip after this is very interesting. Let me see if I can turn up the volume. Jeffrey, this is so cool here. Okay. Yeah. So this is one of Wyoming's biggest gun stores. It's amazing. I'm just picking up something that I custom ordered, but look at all the options. Look at all these awesome guns, guys. I gotta cool. like get myself some guns. Yeah. <laughs> get ready to start we'll shooting. Pick the perfect one. Ooh, look at this purple one. Oh, the purple one is so. That would match your makeup cute. today. It would. Yes. Uh, we're gonna find the perfect one. Okay. Oh my gosh, Jeffrey. So she and Jeffrey went to a local gun store in Wyoming, and he needed to pick up a custom order that he had placed. And while they're there waiting on the order, Jeffrey gives us a little tour of the store, and then Eugenia kind of gawks over the Glocks. Hey, that's 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 some pretty uh, S tier lyric writing right there. <laughs> So Eugenia is gawking at the Glocks in this little store and says that the purple one is cute. This is the first time I've ever heard a firearm be described as cute, but I would imagine that they could do anything and Eugenia would go along with it and put on her happy face and be positive about things. So if the gun is cute, the gun is cute. All right, let's watch it one more time. Wait, this is so cool here. Okay. Yeah. So this is one of Wyoming's biggest gun stores. It's amazing. I'm just picking up something that I custom ordered, but look at all the options. Look at all these awesome guns, guys. I gotta cool. like get myself some guns. Yeah. Get ready to start we'll shooting. Pick you the perfect one. Ooh, look at this purple one. Oh, the purple one is so. That would match your makeup cute. today. It would. Yes. Uh, we're gonna find the perfect one. Let's do it. Okay, so not only is it cute, it would match her makeup. So apparently this is going into the criteria that needs to be met in order to, for Eugenia to have the perfect firearm. Has to be cute, has to match her makeup. Doesn't meet those prerequisites, we have to find another gun. So I don't know if Eugenia is going to have to custom order a gun similarly to how Jeffrey did. I'm not sure if this is part of Jeffrey's daily routine. Whatever eyeshadow color he wants to put on in the morning, he goes and picks up a custom ordered gun that matches. Not really sure what his daily routine looks like but we are in search of the perfect gun color moving along i now want to take a look at jeffrey's instagram story from earlier today now this isn't really that heavily focused on eugenia in these first few clips it is mainly him promoting his makeup but i think the most important thing to keep in mind is jeffrey knows that he has a lot of eyes on him right now jeffrey mm, I mean, you know, we've talked about this. I mean, Jeffrey was in his prime, the zenith of his career, maybe like four or five years ago. Really, really, really accomplished, popular, well-received YouTuber. Uh, throughout the pandemic and after the whole James Charles thing happened, and then, I mean, on top of that, he has all those allegations and everything from years past and everything. So I'm not really sure where... Jeffrey's reputation stands holistically among pop culture and social media as a whole, but hey, he continues to make money somehow. So Jeffrey is still a very powerful, very affluent, very accomplished person, no matter the way you look at it or whether you like him or not. So anyway, getting back to what I was saying, a lot of eyes on him right now. Eugenia is a very hot topic in social media at the moment, and Jeffrey befriending her has caused a lot of turmoil and controversy, and I have covered a lot of it on this channel over the past couple months. So, kind of makes you think, kind of makes you wonder, is this all for financial gain? Is Eugenia just a prop to keep adjacent beside her so that all eyes will be on him as a result of Eugenia being so close to him. Hey, Eugenia, 
Let me send you a need. Let me send you another PR package, honey. Here, here, here. Let me let me send you this two hundred dollar bag. Let me send you five Gothic Beach palettes. I want you to review this on your channel, and I just want you to give me your honest opinion on it. I mean, we know what Eugenia's gonna say. I, I mean, really, Jeffrey could send Eugenia cat food shadow eyeshadow, and she would put it on and love it. So, I, I mean, at this point, it really doesn't come down to product quality for Eugenia. Jeffrey could fart, and she would want to somehow apply it as makeup. I don't really take much for that, but you know, like, hey, like we say, like we said, a lot of impressionable minds. They are appealing to a lot of people on TikTok from younger demographics, and not always do those demographics think things through in some of the discussions that we have here on this channel. So let's just go ahead and watch his story from earlier today. I'm ready for it to be November because there are two new collections coming out this is the sneak peek of the skincare line five brand new products well more four i lied four brand new products and then a new extension of something else this is the theme i'll sh obviously explain it in very big detail soon but this is a sneak peek can you guess what it is a lot of content is coming a lot of products and then of course my birthday collection it launches november 15th we're having a party in LA. We're having a store party in Wyoming. It's going to be a crazy month. Scorpio season is coming, baby. Saddle up! Um, in the meantime, I have a very dear friend in town. We're going to go spend some time together, and we're going to be on live later getting ready. So I'll see you soon. Mwah. A very dear friend in town. Now, we know how dear this friend is to Jeffrey. They've been really good friends since 2008. <laughs> Back when Eugenia was in middle school at age 14, she was in the uh, the middle school bleachers texting her best friend at the time, Jeffree Star, age 22. <laughs> so her... Uh her presence here is making um, a mark on Jeffrey, definitely, to be able to be calling her coming. a very dear friend. Um, this is actually the first that I am hearing of this whole birthday collection launch. And, I, I mean, do I even have to say it? So, if, goth if, if the Gothic Beach palette came out, like, what, th two, three weeks ago? And he's already putting out a, another, I don't even know what that means, collection? <laughs> Is that different from a palette? Whatever. It, it's it's new products. It's, it's more opportunities for him to make money is the point I'm getting at. So if Jeffrey is putting out a palette and then a collection in the span of six weeks of one another, that's some ramped up production. He really has things moving right now. And... What better way to get Gothic Beach and the birthday collection on the market and on people's minds than with people looking at his Instagram stories? I mean, think about it, y'all. Think about it. If we were not observing Eugenia on social media, would you have heard about Gothic Beach? Think about it. I mean, really, this is like the butterfly effect of the, the makeup guru beauty world. I mean, because Eugenia Cooney is associated with Jeffrey, because she visited him, and because she did the PR package, and because she does TikTok battles with him, and because blah, 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 like all this relatability, Gothic Beach birthday collection. Would someone like me, would someone like have you have heard about these 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 lines otherwise and i don't know hey maybe you look at jeffree star right now and you think hey you know despite all this drama despite all this tea despite all this enabling despite all this nastiness he makes a good primer so i think i might get it i'd imagine that there is a viewer out there that is thinking that right now i mean is that out that outlandish to say i'd imagine you you Jessica from South Carolina. You bought the primer, didn't you? Mm. Jessica. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if he and uh, his dear friend did anything else throughout the day. This is just more promotion products. Okay. So this is them in the car. Yeah. Yeah. So Jeffrey's driving and she is in the passenger seat. It looks like she has some little Hello Kitty 
trinket sticking out of her hair right here. She's doing the classic peace sign with the caption, My sister Eugenia Cooney is in Wyoming. My sister. Now, I know, th I know that that's Jeffrey's thing. Like, hi, hi, sisters. Wait, no, that's James Charles' thing. That's not his thing. Why is he calling her his sister? Is it because they've been dear friends since 2008? Is that why? No, 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 no. I'm getting my, I'm getting my uh, washed up pop icons, uh, social media icons mixed up. The sister thing was James. He, what did, J uh, Jeffrey was, hey, hi, how are you? And he did Jeffrey Star approved. And he had, he had other catchphrases. Sister was James's thing. Hmm, okay. So this term of endearment, it's a pretty significant one. I mean, I'm not calling, you know, any old acquaintance my sister or my brother. So, I mean, I, I guess this just goes to show, this is to highlight how good of friends and how long these two have known each other and what they mean to each other. I don't know. Would, would, you, would you guys consider these two sisters? Let me know in the comments. I'm a si okay, and that looks to be about it for Jeffrey's Instagram story. All right, y'all. I now want to take a look at a clip from yesterday's live stream that is currently on fire among social media. Um, Jeffrey uh, was on live. And he got very emotional. Um, I don't think that this is a side we usually see of Jeffrey. I mean, come to think of it, the only times I have ever seen Jeffrey cry was when, uh, well, I guess this video, and then the one he put up uh, with um, the skateboarder ex-boyfriend when he said, we broke up. That, I think that those are the only two times I've ever seen Jeffrey cry. So really, he gets emotional in what he's about to say um, about how terrible and awful people are to Eugenia online. Um, I don't know. Do we think that this is going to be like, a, I think that the people who are door dashing baby diapers and baby formula and cheeseburgers to her house, will we be pointing the finger at those people and calling those people awful? Because he would definitely be in the right by saying that. But what the slippery slope is and what I've noticed a lot of them doing is we like to group in some of the nastiness with some of the people that, in my opinion, are being very rational and making very fair, valid points online. So let's see what he has to say. My advice would be to be kinder so my friend can heal quicker. But I know if I went online every day, everyone was telling me to, I can't say half the things they say to work because so I'll get my account deleted. I wouldn't feel good about myself. So I can't imagine going online every day and seeing the most brutal, disgusting, hateful comments. So dehumanizing. I couldn't imagine turning off my phone and feeling great after. People are so invested into someone they know nothing about. They think they do. From a couple of videos, a little documentary. Um, but sometimes I don't know how she does it. The willpower to go online, face the jury, because that's what a lot of these people are, real humans that have traumas and issues and we're all going through our own thing. We're, we're healing and we're just bonding as, as people. Um, I just think sometimes people are so invested in the wrong thing and that dark energy is so not healthy. And I wish more- Here's the thing about what he just said. People are invested in the wrong thing, and this kind of goes along with the whole, well, if you don't like it, don't watch it discussion that they love to perpetuate on here. The thing about people being invested in the wrong thing that I just find hilariously ironic coming from someone like Jeffree Star is the whole gig the whole persona, the whole everything surrounding Eugenia, Jeffrey, and some of these other people that we watch on here, they do a lot and say a lot that screams at me, the viewer, look at me, look at me, look at me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, look how pretty I am, look how, look how smart I am, look how funny I am, look how, like, it's, 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 it really is in your face. And really, a lot of what they do is successful, and they're good at it to an extent. I mean, if they weren't, other people wouldn't be watching watching them and they wouldn't have gained the platform that they have. So I just never quite am able to wrap my head around 
when people like Jeffrey say, you guys are caught up in the wrong thing. Because I, I don't know. I, I mean, what's the point then? What's the point of you guys being so popular on social media? I mean, obviously, you know that people enjoy looking at you and enjoy listening to you and enjoy watching you. People are invested in you. But then what you get, what you seemingly want you don't you come on here later and say that you don't like it or that it's misguided or I don't know. And I don't know if he's specifically talking to the people who are coming on his comments and saying egregious, horrible things to him, telling her to do blank to herself. But I don't know. It just seems like that statement in and of itself, what he just said, seemed very vague. And that Cinderella shoe could fit could fit a lot of feet. So I, I don't know. I mean, people are invested in the wrong thing. People are. So what are you trying to say? Don't watch us. Don't look at us. Don't be invested in us. If you didn't want to be looked at, invested in, cared about, talked about, etc., you wouldn't be on TikTok Live every single night. Just my opinion. More people knew that. And they would focus on the light. Because the darkness, when it gets you, it gets you. And I've been intertwined in the darkness. So I definitely think my friend does not need any more negativity. I just wish there was more love sent. And that's where I would like people like Jeffrey to be a little bit more specific. She does not need more negativity. Now, do you mean she doesn't need cheeseburgers and baby diapers door dash to her house? If so, I absolutely agree with you. But if you are trying to group in the people that are, in my opinion, having a very valid and reasonable conversation here on the internet and what we're seeing in contemporary social media, if you're calling that negativity, that's where I may differ opinions with you. So uh, I don't know. I don't know, Jeffrey. I, I mean, who are you who are you exactly addressing here? Because in my opinion, and from what I have seen on a lot of forums and a lot of Eugenia's videos, when you go and look at the comments, yes, yes, there is a portion of Eugenia's feedback that is just straight up egregious, nasty comments that have no business being written in the first place. But for a majority of what I see, the majority of the pie chart that makes up the feedback on Eugenia, overwhelmingly, it is frustration, sympathy, and a lot of other very fair emotions that humans naturally feel when observing this situation. So who are we talking to here? Because are we coming on here to address a portion of people who are nasty and probably uh, only make up, you know, some percent of the people that watch her. Is this, or is this kind of like a conversation where the hate is louder? Where, where I see a lot of conversations taking place and a lot of concern being communicated and a lot of, you know, things being said that seem very valid. Are those voices being drowned out by the people who are just being totally evil. Because, you know, you, you you hear that old saying, hate is very loud. Hate's very loud. I mean, you know, for a thousand compliments that you get and you get one nasty critique, it's like that, that, that one nasty critique is all you think about. So I, I don't know. But um, as far as the whole being intertwined in the darkness thing that he just mentioned... I know that Jeffrey has a very tumultuous past with social media. Jeffrey has been around in some capacity online for probably a good 20, 20 years now. Yeah, as long as hey, hey, as long as he's been friends with Eugenia, fifteen years, right? Yeah, <laughs> as long as he's known Eugenia. So Jeffrey's been through a lot. He's been through the ringer, so to speak, in regards to drama and nastiness and you know, different industries and being thrown under the bus, et cetera. I mean, I, I'm not really, you know, throwing him a sympathetic lifeline right now. I'm sure that he, you know, has done his part and perpetuating all of that and everything. But is this 
Jeffrey's place or is he making a point when he says that we all need to come to the light? We all need to see what he sees when you get grappled in the darkness and when you get all intertwined with all of that. I mean, do you all really think like holistically, do you really think that the conversations that we have on here and the people that are having on Reddit and some of the other forums, I mean, that are very, in my opinion, fair critiques, fair conversations, fair, non, non-derogatory non type language. Do we really think that that is darkness, be, being intertwined in the darkness? I don't, because you know what? I agree with him when I say, when he says that when you get caught up in that and everything, it's a really hard thing to work yourself out of. And I wouldn't feel right. I wouldn't feel right coming on here if I felt that what I was putting online was mentally damaging or nasty to Eugenia's potential recovery. If I was coming on here and just spewing a lot of hate and a lot of derogatory comments, not, and I feel like you guys would feel that too. I feel like you guys would not want to come to these videos and observe the situation that I am also observing if I just came on here and talked about nastiness and talked about evil and darkness because I don't want to be messed up in that. I don't want to be intertwined in all of that and everything. So... What are we doing here? See, this is what I don't like. I don't I don't like when they make it a good versus evil thing. Because if you're good, you're you, you know, you're doing a lot of things that the bad people would disagree with. And a lot of what you're saying the bad people are doing, I think that that's fair. I think it's reasonable. I, I think that people are having a very necessary conversation on the internet in this day and age. So I don't like when they try to make it good versus evil, darkness versus holiness. It, there's there's a lot of facets to this. So, I mean, I agree with him holistically when he says, you know, don't get caught up in darkness, be kinder to people. But the thing is, and the tricky part that comes along with this is, who you talking to? Because I'm not a big fan of the generalized blanket statements. Because they have a habit of taking those blanket statements and wrapping them up in a whole lot of demographics who don't deserve to be wrapped up in them. Her way. Because that's really all she deserves is happiness. Peace and happiness. Don't we all deserve that? So I moved in the middle of nowhere. And now my friend gets to come out here and enjoy the peace and quiet that I've created for myself. And she gets to disconnect and be around nature. And of course we're live, you guys. This is our careers and like we're internet personalities. But for the 12 hours that we were not on earlier, it was beautiful. And I've never seen her this happy. And I just want the best for her always. And I wish I could be there all the time but um i cherish every moment i really do i cherish every moment with them and i just okay this is kind of getting into a type of conversation that we really haven't seen now i will quote one moment that happened over the past couple months that is sort of a precursor to what he's doing right now there was a time when he paul eugenia and rich were all on live stream together and they were basically talking about how it's better to accept things for the way that they are and be kind about things instead of trying to go against the current and make something that probably will never happen happen so when you apply what I just said to the situation that we are observing right here, what, really, what does that mean to you? Because the way that he is choking up right here and talking about this situation, he's almost talking as if, it, it, you know, it's like it's like a hospice situation or it's like nearing the end here. It's like, you know, we only have so much left. You know, it's the 12 hours a day. We got to do beautiful things. And I just think that people should take more time to do beautiful things. I, I mean, 
I, I don't know. Does Jeffrey mentally think that we are past the point of no return and that at this point it should just be look at it and pity it and throw kindness and praise at it instead of trying to intervene? That's a that's sort of a new conversation that he has sort of introduced here. I mean, he's talked about it in the past. Guys, if all we did was cry and wrap ourselves up in the negativity all the time, life would be awful. So this is why we laugh at things. This is why we make light of very serious situations. Because if we weren't laughing, we would be crying all the time. And who wants that? I'm paraphrasing, but he said something along the lines of that. So really, that, all of that, of what I just said, that was a precursor to what we're seeing just now. Of, you know, I've never seen her this happy before. We all need to be kinder to people. I, I, really, talking as if, you know, the the, the door is closing. I this is I, I've never I haven't yet to see this sort of rhetoric from him. Uh, I'm gonna rewind this a little bit back and I want to start off a little um, and let it go a little bit further than I did. It was beautiful and I've never seen her this happy and I just want the best for her always and I wish I could be there all the time but um, I cherish every moment I really do. I cherish every moment with them and I just want the best for them you know so when i see people being so evil and hateful it really breaks my heart and i'm just human and it hurts when i see my friends hurting it hurts me deeply and i wish i could take away that pain and that hurt and i can't i just wish people were nicer to her I really do. And I know they're never going to be. And that's what fucking hurts the most, is I know they're never going to stop. <laughs> I just wish people were nicer to my friend. It really, really hurts me to see so many people mean all the time. I, I just have, so, I have too much empathy. It just... I mean, the water works. Now, I know, hey, I know that they've been best friends for 15 years now. I know that they go way back, you know, 2008. They were living it up together, popping champagne bottles in the middle school bleachers. But to hear this, to hear this, I, this is a lot of emotion to be saying about someone that you met yesterday. Uh, you know, I, I wish I could take away their pain. I know that things are never going to change, and that's what hurts me the most. I wish I could be there for her all the time. I, th this is a lot of emotion. Um, do we think that this is performative? Do we think that this is coming from a good place? Do we think that this is just Jeffrey trying to play a role of a hero. I, I'm, I don't really know what to make of this. However, I will say that the whole vibe that I got just now from him saying, we, we have to be kinder to people and I've never seen her this happy before. And I, the, the door closing mentality, I, that's a little bit concerning. So I, I don't know. Is is what we're observing something that should just be accepting defeat? Or is it not even supposed to be viewed that way? Are you supposed to just, I don't know, view it as something, well, I mean, let's just let's just have fun in the now. Let's just do it now, you guys. Let's just make them make make the best of what we have right now. Like is this the way that we should be thinking and putting this onto social media right now? I I mean, and he's getting very emotional about this. I, I mean, if you were to fake something like this, I mean, I, I just I don't think that I could fake crying, so I guess that I have a difficult time comprehending someone else being able to make pseudo emotions like this but it seems like it's coming from a genuine place and it seems like he's really hurting for her but i'm just wondering should he be is this the right thing to be doing right now and more importantly is this the right thing to be broadcasting online fucking hurts it really really hurts 
And I just want her to smile. I don't want her to know that I'm crying. I just want her happy. And that's what I'm going to do. I mean, girl, girl, really? You don't want her to know that you're crying. You are putting this out onto social media. If you really didn't know that you wanted her... That you weren't crying, you wouldn't be broadcasting this right now, talking about, I've never seen her this happy before, saying all these other hospice-like things. I don't want her to know that I'm crying right now. This is, this is an interesting video. Very interesting video. We're all human, and we're all allowed to have emotions. And I just want to let you guys know that um, it's just not okay what goes on. It's really not okay. Oh, I wish people... But you know what? I, re I really wish. And you know what? I actually find myself giving this critique to a lot of the people that I observe on social media. Can you specifically identify or pinpoint what you are talking about instead of just using these blanket statements to address everyone? I don't like what people are doing online. People are horrible. People are awful. People... <laughs> It's so vague, I don't think that that does anything. Because unless you know what the problem is, unless you're identifying the problem, how can we fix the problem if we don't know what it is? Because really, you're just coming on here, in my opinion, you're just complaining. You're complaining about nothing in particular. Or you're, you're alluding, you're complaining to allude about something. And when you allude to something and you, sh you, you sort of foreshadowed your audience, it's open to anyone's interpretation, baby. So if you're coming on here and crying and saying all this stuff, you know, say, oh, they're nasty, they're horrible, they're this, they're that. It, it's People are going to take that and they're going to place it in Cinderella's shoe in where they see fit. Oh, Jeffrey said this. He must mean this. So I wish that people in these kind of situations would be a little bit more specific so people know what you're talking about. I don't think it gets us anywhere. I don't think it helps anything when people come on here and just say the world's mean, the world's horrible, people need to be nicer. Identify the problem. Talk about the problem propose potential solutions. What is the difference that you want to see in the world? What is the difference that you want to see in social media? What do you specifically not like about this? Defend your stance. When you improve your argument, you will bring more support to your side and more people will listen to you. People aren't stupid. People can form their own opinions and arguments on their own. So if you make good sense and you come on here and you say all the right things and people say, oh, I could get behind that. Hey, you know what? Jeffrey's making a really good point right now. The support will come. The support will come. The support will follow. So I don't think a lot was accomplished in this little three minutes and 24 seconds of crying other than maybe just some sort of performative thing. I just, he kind of had me for a little bit, but then at the end when he said, I don't want her to see me like this, I mean, Real, like in the Academy Award goes to. All right, y'all. Well, I think that that is it for this video. I honestly wanted to get into more of the TikTok live stream coverage and everything, but I did not realize that I was going to go on so long about two Instagram stories and one three minute clip. Jordy can talk. Jordy can talk. It's oh lordy, it's Jordy for a reason. It's like oh god, this kid doesn't shut up. That that's really the oh lordy part of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, thank you for watching. Um, let me know what you think. What's going on with this? What's the dynamic? What was this whole crying video thing about? I mean, them out and about doing stuff, um, particularly the I've never seen her this happy before. The whole rhetoric is very, very peculiar, and I need y'all's thoughts on it. So we will be chatting in the comments below, and I will see you soon.